Hey there, thanks for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris and welcome to Lego Mini Reviews, the show where I review a ton of different Lego vintage and new sets right here on the Duck Bricks YouTube channel in a short form format. So I have a ton of Brickling orders to get through as well as just associated Lego purchases and I figured instead of making a mega video where I go through every single one that's hours long, why not break it up into separate mini reviews? And so in addition to our normal three videos a week schedule, be be sure to stay tuned for a mini review dropping every single day where we do not normally have a standard video releasing. I hope you enjoy and let's jump right into our first pick. This is the Bone Demon Mech. Oh man, is it truly one of the best sets that I've ever made, one of the best mechs, one of the best play sets. I cannot stop gushing about this set. Oh, and did I mention, it also does this. Yeah, that's right. It glows in the dark with fully new glow-in-the-dark pieces for 2021. This is one of the first times we are getting many of these different pieces in glow-in-the-dark, specially casted for this particular set. I'm curious to see if these are ever reused outside the set. I sure hope they do because this is one of the few, if not only, LEGO sets that is pretty much full glow-in-the-dark across the entire length of it. And that truly looks impressive on display at night. I am so happy with the way this turned out and that is one of the coolest things about the set. But let's now move back to the actual set itself so we can take a look at some of the different functions. So we're back here in the review studio and let's take a look at the different things you can do with the set. So first of all, it includes a miniature monkey kid mech, very similar to the Marvel mechs in sort of play features and style and size. Just something small to be able to battle against the Bone Demon mech, which I think is pretty well scaled. It does play very well. I am a fan of the smaller Marvel mechs, so I think this is pretty quality. It also does include a special little bone archway, and the reason for this inclusion will actually be explained in a little bit, and we'll set that aside for now and get back to it. So immediately you can see this has a very striking presence as a mech. Despite not actually having articulatable legs, all it has are these little movable spider claws down here. I think that actually adds a lot to the design because it really sets this apart as a completely unique mech, not like anything they've ever done for LEGO. Of course, you have the bony detailing going all around. I love the way these stickers actually are put on the glow-in-the-dark pieces because the light does shine through the stickers themselves. And you've got a lot of detail on these spider pieces up here. All sorts of different things that come together to truly accentuate the look and feel of this mech, down to the banners or cape-like elements on the sides here. A very menacing look and feel for something like this. And of course, the head itself is very cool, and you can actually have it close up over the entire mech itself. You can have it kind of bend downwards or be arced back a little bit, depending on whether or not you actually want to display the minifigure there. All in all, this is a truly amazing mech with a fantastically imposing silhouette. But that's not all, because there's a lot of other things you can actually do with this, surprisingly enough. You may be noticing a few things already, but let's make it even more obvious. So... First of all, we're going to start off by uh, decapitating it. You may be wondering, so why did we just do that? And you're going to find out. So the head can be stored on the gateway here, making this gateway a lot more menacing as well in the process. So we've got this kind of head storage there. And then you have all this other stuff. So what's really awesome is that, so first of all, you've got, once we bend open these elements here, this whole segment can be opened up. This is a completely separate build. It's almost like the spirit prison cage for the bone demon. You can see some detailing on the inside there. So this is a completely separate thing that just separates out from the model itself. So we can set that aside as well. You've got a glow in the dark bone in the center there. But one thing we can do first is then remove these things. So these are actually completely standalone builds. You just need to rotate the legs around like so. So just kind of move the legs around, and you have two different spiders that function perfectly on their own, bone demon spiders to crawl alongside the ground of this mech, and these look like pretty good builds just by themselves. It's honestly hard to tell they actually were originally just shoulder pads for a mech because they actually are very good as standalone builds, but there's more that you can do with this. So let's set those aside right now. You can see that this is kind of slowly shrinking and hide a little bit. The next thing we need to do is actually go alongside all the way to the back here and just pop this off. It just connects on a ball joint. It does have waist articulation and set that aside just for now. And we'll be getting back to this. So immediately right now, you can see that turning this around, we've got another little scorpion-like creature here. And that's not all because 
There's another one on the back here, separates out just another little bone scorpion here. This can be removed from the click hinges there, pivoted inwards, and then claws go on the front here. You've got a fully fledged scorpion, which honestly could have been a build of its own. This could have been some sort of antagonistic force as its own set. It's not like some other sets where by disassembling stuff it actively makes them worse. This actually makes it look even better. And that's not all, because there's even more you can do with this. So let's now take this, and there's a few more things that you can do. So first of all, you need to remove the arms here. And there you have it. This is a throne of its own, or a separate sort of crypt that you can use for the bone demon to be reawakened. So you've got your crypt right here. So that's uh, probably the uh, least functioning standalone piece of the set. It's very awkwardly supposed to be something else, but I think it functions all right. You can put the crypt back in there to actually make it look like some sort of a more ornamental landscape thing, which to be honest, doesn't look too, too bad. Obviously it very clearly is supposed to be a torso of a mech, but if you kind of squinted it, maybe you can see it as something else, especially if you put this in front. Now this just looks like a throne or some sort of a crypt build. So that's that. And then what do you do with the arms? So first of all, you remove the swords from the arms here. And then you'll notice the scorpion has some handy ball joints right here, which you can use to place the arms in and give this scorpion some very, very oversized front pincers. So you plug these in like so, bend this down, and there you have it. This is a whole scorpion to itself with claws coming out of the front. So that's really cool. So now you've got so many different standalone things. You've got two larger spiders, one miniature spider, one large scorpion, one gateway, one crypt, and you still have the two swords left. And that is just all the pieces that come into making the Bone Demon mech itself, which I think is one of the coolest concepts that LEGO has ever done for a LEGO set. This is truly a fantastic experience to actually take them all apart and put them together, because for the most part, besides maybe some of this, these all stand alone perfectly fine on their own, and they could be perfectly fine builds of their own as well. So that's so impressive that LEGO actually managed to do this and actually convert the mech into very different shapes. The Scorpion in particular I was very impressed by because when you look at the mech up first, it's not obvious that there's sort of a Scorpion build hidden inside it until you actually put it together and yeah, you can see this really worked out very well. But now let's put this all back together so you can see exactly how it all comes together into the larger mech. All right, and here we have it, the Bone Demon Mech fully reassembled. You can see just how each of the different pieces came together to form this fully cohesive build, which is truly one of the best Monkey Kid mechs they've ever done. Maybe even the best, one of the best Lego mechs in general. And honestly, this is so high up on the list because I truly feel like this is what embodies what a Lego set is for kids. You have the perfect amount of play features. You have this whole entire large mech that can be used as a large fighting force. But if you're a kid and maybe you want to play collaboratively, have a bunch of you team up against the good guys, or even just play with a bunch of little smaller stuff, you obviously have so many things that can be separated out. You've got the spider legs up in the front here, the scorpions, the two little spiders here, the arms being moved to the scorpion, the flags being moved up, the head being placed on a different gate. So, so many different things you can do to change around the set just by disassembling the core features. And it's not like some other sets where if they've tried a function like this, many times these side builds just end up not looking very good. This looks very good and is very impressive for a mech like this. So, I am so happy with the set. It's probably one of the best Monkey Kid sets yet. One of my favorite sets to come out of an action adventure theme this year and truly even blows away some Ninjago sets if I'm being honest. So this is truly one of the best Lego play feature filled sets they've ever done. And as a final note, $120 for this, yeah, that's a lot more worth it to me, especially compared to the Spider Mech, which I felt was a little lackluster in some points, maybe a little lacking. This actually is a very large and formidable build, 
but it's also something that you can play with. It's very solid. It's not wasting pieces. It doesn't have any awkward elements to it or stuff that you can't actually pose around. $120 for this is really perfect, and I'm surprised it wasn't $150. I would have easily paid $150 for this. So this has one of the best values out of any of the LEGO sets on this list, in my opinion, which is kind of a shock given that Monkey Kid is not necessarily known for having good value. However, this set truly takes the cake on having some of the best value I've seen from a LEGO playset. Alright, and with that, we have summed up this mini LEGO review. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and do let me know down in the comments below what do you think of this set, do you like it, do you dislike it, and if you own it, what have been your experiences with building and playing with the set itself? Also let me know in the comments if you like this format of mini reviews, I'm trying to put them out on a fairly regular basis, so thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll talk to you again very soon. Like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very, very soon.